in her outcry, in her very own words, it's, she said, it's not like I could tell the police. My dad is the police. Let me see your hands. Stop right there. A more than 18 hour manhunt for Stephen Nicholas Broderick ended along a two lane Travis County Road Monday morning. And you lock your fingers on top of your head. Turn around, face away from me, do it now. This dash camera video shows Broderick didn't give officers any trouble. Although suspected in the murder of his wife, daughter, and daughter's boyfriend, the former sheriff's deputy was armed. Attempting to detain it appears he has a pistol in his waistband. I just missed my brother. <laughs> These people still have questions, like what would lead a former Travis County Sheriff's deputy to kill these two high school sweethearts and star athletes, along with Alyssa's mother, Amanda. And I don't want the death penalty for him. I want him to live day by day, wake up realizing that he hurt a family, he hurt a community, he hurt so many people, and he needs to live with that. I literally have no more tears to cry. I mean, just thinking about him just hurts my heart. Jalen Cook and his best friends just want to know why. Their close friend, Willie Simmons III, was one of the three victims in Sunday's Northwest Austin triple murder. Just know that everybody loved him. He never talked down on anybody. And he, he was just so kind. Simmons was described as a stand-up man only 18 years old, ready to play for the University of North Texas football team in the fall. And his friends, Wesley Harkins, Lyndon Rangel, and Aron Vega say they were all like brothers and they'll always remember his jokes. We was always laughing. It'd be funny, super funny. Alyssa Broderick was another victim killed in this shooting. And all of them say they were dating for a long time and truly loved each other. He would go ahead and go with her instead of us because he was so loyal, but yeah, that's Willie. Simmons' friends say they'll miss him and never forget the good memories. It's just like losing your whole heart and you don't even have any place for love anymore because he's gone. 35-year-old Amanda Broderick was in the process of divorcing her husband and had a pending order of protection against him after their 16-year-old daughter revealed that she was sexually assaulted by him. Her greatest fear was that her husband, former Austin detective Stephen Broderick, would kill her and her kids as a result of the abuse going public, therefore she pleaded with the courts to keep her safe. Sadly, while her husband was out on bail for the alleged sexual assault, he would shoot and kill his wife, their daughter, and their daughter's boyfriend. How could a former police officer, someone who once swore to protect and serve, just murder three people in cold blood? Welcome to Viral Crimes. Subscribe and hit the bell icon for more stories. This story takes us to Austin, Texas. Amanda Denise Broderick was a wonderful mother to her 16-year-old daughter Alyssa Broderick and her 9-year-old son Caden Broderick. She loved working in the healthcare field and assisting others. She developed new interests in dance, jogging, hiking, and travel, but she liked spending time alone with her children the most. At any of her children's games, you could always count on seeing Amanda in the stands. When you first met her, she gave you a reassuring embrace and a pleasant grin. She was married to Stephen Broderick, a detective within the Travis County Sheriff's Office. They had a nine-year-old son together Caden Broderick, but 16-year-old Alyssa was Stephen's stepdaughter. Some sources refer to her as his adoptive daughter. Alyssa Broderick was known for being full of energy, playful, and for having a smile that could light up the room. Alyssa loved sports, hiking, and dancing and doing TikToks. Alyssa was known for her consideration for others and kind gestures. Alyssa had a boyfriend, Willie Simmons III. Alyssa and Willie had attended Elgin High School together, and Willie, a senior, had been recruited to play football at the University of North Texas. He was an exceptional young man and leader among his peers. Amanda's 16-year-old daughter Alyssa came forward with allegations that her stepfather, Stephen, had sexually assaulted her. An exam was conducted on Alyssa, and evidence proved her claims. Stephen was arrested in June of 2020 and then charged with sexually assaulting his stepdaughter. He bonded out of jail days after his arrest and resigned from the sheriff's office. After the allegations, Amanda filed for divorce from her husband. Amanda then requested sole custody of their two children Alyssa and the couple's nine-year-old sons, due to Stephen having a history or pattern of committing sexual abuse on a person under age 18. 
Additionally, Amanda requested all visits with his kid should be supervised and that he not consume alcohol for at least 12 hours before. In family court, Amanda said she feared he would seek revenge on her and the kids because the allegation had been made public. Stephen Broderick was ordered to wear a GPS tracking device. He was released from custody 16 days after his arrest after posting a $50,000 bond. He was told not to go within 200 feet of his daughter Alyssa. Amanda pleaded with the courts to grant her a protective order against him. I'm afraid he will try to hurt me or my children because these allegations have come out and he may lose his career. Stephen has prior military experience and is SWAT trained. If he wanted to hurt someone, he would know how she said. State District Judge Karen Sage ordered the removal of Stephen's monitor five months after his release, despite Amanda's pleas, claiming it was a pretty common thing to do. Stephen still maintained the right to see his nine-year-old son, and it would be during one of these custody visits that Stephen would unleash an attack against his family. Amanda Broderick and Stephen Broderick were meeting for a scheduled visit with their son when the collision occurred. Stephen crashed his vehicle into Amanda's car and then started shooting at her, his daughter Alyssa, and Alyssa's boyfriend Willie Simmons III killing all three of them before fleeing the scene. The APD said the couple's son was unharmed and later found away from the scene. A witness driving on Great Hills Trail saw the nine-year-old boy running from a body on the ground. The boy asked the witness to call 911 as he was trying to get into her car. He reportedly told the witness his father was angry about the divorce with his mother. She drove him away from the scene as he told her that he witnessed his father rack into their vehicle and shoot his sister's boyfriend. The woman who helps facilitate the visits told police she arrived to pick up the boy from the mother, who she would then take inside as they wait for the father, and heard what she said sounded like a collision and gunshots. When she made her way into the parking lot, she said she found all three victims lying on the ground and witnessed Stephen Broderick walking away. The shooting scene was an apartment complex in the area. Austin Mayor Steve Adler tweeted that the location of the shooting was the Arboretum Oaks Apartments at 9617 Great Hills Trail. When officers arrived, they found three victims that had been shot lying near two vehicles that appeared to have been involved in a crash. Austin Travis County EMS said the individuals had suffered gunshot wounds and medics performed CPR, but all three died shortly after. A large manhunt was launched for Stephen. After authorities received a call about a guy strolling along the 12,300 block of Kimber Road, he was located. He was placed under arrest without incident on Monday shortly after 7 a.m., putting an end to the manhunt. According to Manor Police, he was discovered with a loaded gun in his belt. Broderick was taken to Travis County Jail on Monday after his arrest, where he is now being held on capital murder charges. The prosecution's plea to keep Broderick in custody without bond was approved by a Travis County judge. First night, the former Travis County deputy, now charged with capital murder, accused of shooting and killing his ex-wife, his adopted daughter, and her boyfriend. New at 6 o'clock, we're looking at the last 11 months when Stephen Broderick was first arrested. He was charged with sexual assault and he lost his job. There was a divorce, protective orders, and then a judge decided he no longer was required to wear a GPS monitor. KXAN investigator Jody Barr joins us live from outside the Travis County Jail. Jody, what have you uncovered? Well, Robert Sidney again, Stephen Broderick is here inside of a jail cell in downtown Austin here on a capital murder charge. We've dug through his criminal case file and we found that the county was watching Broderick's every move with a GPS monitor, but that monitoring stopped about five months ago. Let me see your hands. Stop right there. A more than 18 hour manhunt for Stephen Nicholas Broderick ended along a two lane Travis County Road Monday morning. Police say witnesses saw Broderick and thought he was suspicious, so they called 911. Interlock your fingers on top of your head. Turn around, face away from me, do it now. This dash camera video shows Broderick didn't give officers any trouble. Although suspected in the murder of his wife, daughter, and daughter's boyfriend, the former sheriff's deputy was armed. Attempting to detain appears he has a pistol in his waistband. State and federal law enforcement spent the night searching for Broderick and Travis in Bastrop counties. SWAT ended up at this Bastrop County RV campground overnight. And they had an announcement going on kind of a, a loop. Uh, telling him to come out with his hands up, his safety could not be uh, guaranteed. 
This man asked not to be named, but lived next door to Broderick. The man says he saw drones overhead and what he believed were snipers posted around the campground. SWAT eventually broke into Broderick's camper. There was a flashbang that went off in the middle of that uh, where they were trying to, get, trying to get him out, basically. They assumed he was in there. It turns out in the end he wasn't. Last June, the Texas Rangers charged Broderick, a Travis County Sheriff's deputy at the time, with sexually assaulting a family member and family violence. A judge ordered him to wear a GPS monitor to have no contact with his wife or children and set him free on bond with a protective order in place. But prosecutors say Broderick violated the protective order the very next month when he sent his wife an email and attached intimate private images of the pair. In November, the judge approved a plan to let the county remove the GPS monitor. Then Sunday, Investigators say Stephen Broderick rammed his wife's car in a northwest Austin apartment complex, then shot and killed her, his daughter, and his daughter's boyfriend, both high schoolers. A witness grabbed Broderick's young son and got him to safety. Broderick then went on the run. What you have now is a son that has lost a sister, lost a mother. Uh, his father's, uh, I would assume, going to jail for life. Uh, and and he didn't do anything to deserve all that. And so my heart just kind of goes out to him. Prosecutors dropped the sexual assault charge as part of Broderick's plea deal. Amanda and Alyssa Broderick's family said the dismissal denied justice to Alyssa, who was the victim of the sexual assault. Today, a former Travis County Sheriff's deputy pled guilty to capital murder for killing his ex-wife, his adopted daughter, and his daughter's boyfriend in Northwest Austin last year. Stephen Broderick will now spend the rest of his life in prison without the possibility for parole. How do you plead to the capital murder of multiple persons, guilty or not guilty? Guilty. Stephen Broderick accepted a plea deal for capital murder of multiple persons. In doing so, he was able to escape the death penalty. But also part of the deal, he has no ability to appeal the case. The families of the three victims, Amanda Broderick, Alyssa Broderick, and Willie Simmons, came from all over the state to see this plea deal. Amanda Broderick's aunt says she wants to keep their memory alive. I just don't want Amanda and Amanda to be forgotten because she was a, she was like a ray of sunshine. She really was. Even if I never even saw her for a long time, and it was like, hey, at the end, and hugging and loving and. And then Alyssa too. Alyssa was always just lovable. She may not ever see you, but she would just come up and hug you. But the court dismissed a sexual assault of a minor case against Broderick. He was out on bond at the time of the murders. And their families say today justice was not served. But say that it's a sexual assault, like acknowledge it. They wouldn't acknowledge it. Aunt of Willie Simmons worries there will be a chilling effect. I think more needs to be done because That'll scare people with sexual assault from speaking up and telling their truth. Some members of the Simmons family say they don't agree with the death penalty being off the table. But no matter what punishment, the families know that their loved ones won't be brought back. They were two, they were two magical people. I, I tell everybody, they, why does the Lord take the, the angels? Court documents state her stepdad and adoptive father, Stephen Broderick, then a Travis County Sheriff's detective, had been sexually abusing her since March. There is physical DNA at the hospital. How is that not her voice? How is that not enough? Do you understand that she had to literally take the DNA, hold it in her hand, tell her mom what happened, go all the way to the hospital, hand it over to somebody else and tell her story? And today it doesn't... There's, Today, they are silencing her. Today, they're saying it doesn't matter. Stephen was indicted on 12 counts of physical and sexual abuse. Tuesday, they were all dropped against Alyssa's family's wishes. And when she spoke up, in her outcry, in her very own words, it's, she said, it's not like I could tell the police. My dad is the police. What message are we sending? Family members had the opportunity to talk with Broderick face to face. In court, Simmons' father said that his son had a bright future ahead of him. He said that Simmons was a standout student and football player. In a statement confirming Alyssa and Willie's deaths, the Elgin School District said, 
We are heartbroken by the news of the senseless tragedy, and we extend our deepest condolences to the families of Willie Simmons III and Alyssa Broderick. Willie was a senior at Elgin High School. He was a leader among his classmates and a remarkable young man. Strong, both academically and athletically, he represented the very best of Elgin ISD. He was the captain of our football team, a friend to everyone he met, and most recently, recruited to play football for the University of North Texas. Friends of the pair say they were both destined for greatness. He was going to make a mark on this world and touch people and bless people and make a name. And his name is going to live in our hearts, but he's my son. I feel like I lost a child. I really, really do. I have no words right now. I just miss my brother, man. Amanda. Willie and Alyssa, may they rest in peace. This was an unimaginable tragedy that has affected so many lives. This family should have been protected after reporting what happened to them. Victims should not live in fear after coming forward to report a crime. My condolences to the families of Alyssa, Willie, and Amanda. May you find some way to heal and one day find peace. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next video.